so you've got two kinds of diagrams now and um, we have more or less the same result but we handle each one ever so slightly differently so I'm gonna start with this one this is what I call the line of sight um, survey because I think that's the easiest way to distinguish it but its formal name and this is what I'd love you to make as a subheading is a plain table radial survey. Uh, plain as in a flat surface as opposed to um, this Not is a plain surface. cake without much fancy stuff on it. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Okay. In fact, this will be useful. So, I want you to look at um, wherever you've got this. Now, let's just revise. What do you do with this thing? You went outside, someone stood in the middle of the field, or middle, some place in the middle, and then you sent people off in all these different directions. Okay? Now, the reason why, just to revise, for those of you especially who didn't do it this way, it's worth jotting down. The reason why I'm calling it a line of sight for your survey is, how do you know where each of these directions is? One of the most helpful ways is to take your piece of paper where you're drawing it, right? and you put it down on a plane, on a flat surface. Maybe you put it on the ground, on the grass, maybe you put it on the cricket pitch, whatever. You put it there, down on the ground, and then as you send people off to walk in different directions, you literally just draw a line from your page in the middle off in the direction that they're walking, down the line of sight. Okay? So that's where all of these lines come from. They hit an edge, like a fence, or steps, or a path, or something like that, and then they take that measurement and bring it back. Okay? So this is what we've ended up so far from um, Renee's group. Okay? Now, then what do we do? The whole page is not the field or whatever it is we're measuring. The whole page is just where we started to draw a diagram. If you recall, what we want to do now is draw the outlines. Okay? So my advice is go to the longest length on your diagram, which in this case is 72 meters. Okay? Place your ruler against it. And then pick a number on there that fits in pretty well with 72 meters. Now, on your diagram, maybe, just conveniently, you can fit 72 millimeters on there. So if you can fit a 7.2 centimeter line from here to here, that's perfect. If I'm going from 72 meters to 72 millimeters, I'm going to write that. How many millimeters are there in a meter? How many millimeters are there in a meter? 1,000. Exactly 1,000. So my scale here is, and this is a very common scale, is 1 to 1,000. Okay, that'll become important a bit later on. So I find where that 72 millimeters is, I measure it out, and then I say, okay, that's where my edge is. So I'm going to put in, let's just suppose that is 72 millimeters on my diagram. Once you've done that, you've got to convert all of the rest of them as well. So see this one, which is 68 meters? I want to measure from the center, measure out 68 millimeters, because that's my survey, that's my scale, and then I'm going to draw the spot. I'm going to do the same thing for all of them, going all the way around. So this one, 21 meters, will be represented by 21 millimeters, 28 millimeters, and let's call that about 50. So you're measuring from your center point out along your radial lines, that's what we call them, whatever length the chords with whatever you measured. We drew five lines, that was my suggestion for most of you. Some of you may have four or six even. Now that we've got our five lines, we've got five points on those lines and I'm gonna join them up. So can you do that with me? Let's dot to dot. Okay, that was dramatic. So this thing here, the blue thing, that's our actual field, or so it is according to our radial survey. Okay? Now, uh, we can do lots of things with this, but for now, just for today, I'm going to focus just on perimeter. Okay, what's the perimeter of this thing? Uh, obviously, you can walk all the way around, but sometimes that's not as easy. So how do I work out the perimeter here? Because we chose a scale, right? because we chose a scale, now I can use my ruler and I can measure all of these new lengths in millimeters. <laughs> Maybe.
maybe you could leave your disagreements to the end. He's trying to tell me there's no millimetres on this ruler. There's <laughs> millimetres <laughs> on it. And he's working If there's centimetres, you can use those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So here's what I want you to do now. On your diagram, do you make it nice and large? Georgia, can I borrow your diagram for a second? Oh. I think this is a good size. If you don't use your entire page, it's got to be something at least this big, which is about half your page. Okay. So I think that's a good size because we're going to put a lot on this diagram. It's going to get really busy really fast. Okay, thank you. What I want you to do now is measure each of the lengths on the perimeter of your pentagon. Right. So just going by eye, when I look at this across here, I'm thinking maybe that'll end up being, say, 120 millimeters. If it's 120 millimeters on my survey diagram, then in reality, it's going to be 120 meters. It's a thousand times bigger. Right? So I'm going to measure it and mark it out as such. Question? 21, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the same all the way around. So I'm just going to, because I'm not actually measuring, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Okay, so once you have measured with your ruler, because your diagram is to scale, you can use your um, measurements on the diagram to convert to measurements in reality. And now you can find a primitive for this, at least an approximate one. Okay. So I'm going to say, therefore, perimeter equals. And I'm just going to mark them all out. So, <coughs> let's see. Very short. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 